like 1 divided by 14. So I paid 7 cents a book. That's in the restricted section. Today we're bringing you a big ass book haul. Yes, we went to the fall library sale for yes. dollar bag day. So we each got a bag of this nature and you can fill it with books for a dollar. Yep. And I didn't fill my bag all the way. I was trying to be a little selective. I don't really need more books. <laughs> I started out with that mindset, um, but then I said fuck it and I filled mine up fairly full. You didn't get that many more than I did though. No, I didn't. Um, so, oh, oh, and we're drinking Big Easy IPA from Abita. Yes, and we've actually had this before. Um, this is one of the beers that we poured when we volunteered at Street we, Fest. We just volunteered for the Street Fest at our, yeah. um, local brew, our favorite local brewery mm -hmm. who we're kind of regulars there. <laughs> Put on, yeah. yeah. So, um, I actually like this IPA. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, it's a very, mm. it's a very light IPA. It is, yeah. That's not mild. too hoppy. Mm -mm. I really like it. All right. <clears throat> so, um, I'll start because I have a few other books um, I'm going to talk about as well that I have just acquired over the last several months. Because I haven't really been buying a lot of books, so I haven't been doing book hauls because I didn't have enough to show, but I figured I'd just add them on to the end of this. But anyway, and why? The first book I got at the library sale is The Crane Wife by Patrick Ness. And I've actually never read any Patrick Ness. I've definitely heard of him. Um, I hear him talked about quite a bit on BookTube, and I have heard of this one. So I thought I'd check it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm not gonna like give synopsises of most synopses, synopses? of most of these because there's Otherwise, too many books. Forever. Yeah, and also it was a dollar bag day library sale, so I didn't really look into them that far. Right, <laughs> I put them in the bag and I thought they looked interesting. Um, so the first book I got at the library sale is a constellation of vital phenomena by Anthony Mara, and this one. I actually don't know what it's about, but Sue said it sounds good, so I... <laughs> well, I actually own that book, too, and I've heard fantastic things about it. I haven't read it yet. It has something to do with um, the war and a little girl and her neighbor take refuge in this. It's, like, over the span of, like, five days, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't read it yet, but I've heard, like, nothing but great things about it, so... Yeah, it sounds... It sounds good. All right, and the next book I picked up is Praise Song for the Widow by Paul, Polly? I'm not sure. Paula? Polly? Paula? Polly? Paul. Marshall? It's a woman. The author is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this was kind of a little bit of a cover buy because I just, the cover caught my attention. It's pretty cool. It's really pretty. Um, and I don't know much else about it. Uh, the widow of the title is A.V. Johnson, Black and Middle-Aged. Decorous to a fault. Is that how you pronounce that word? Decorous? I'm not sure. I would assume it means like she has decorum. So I wonder if you would say decorous or decorous. I'm not sure. Hmm. I have to look that word up. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. There you go. There, there it Grace is. Great song for the widow. Next I have White Oleander by Janet Fitch. I've not read this. Um, I, of course, have heard of it, and I know what it's about, but I haven't read it, so... I love that book. I think it was really good. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna <clears throat> read it. The next one I got is Stories of Your Life and Other Stories by Ted Chiang. Chiang? Um, I've, this is a collection of short stories, and I've heard kind of mixed things about it. Hmm. But I thought I'd, you know, check it out. It was less than a dollar, so why not? So fuck it. Yeah. Uh, next, I got The Road by Cormac McCarthy. I have read this before, but I don't own it, and I did really like it, so I wanted to have a copy for my library. The next book I got um, caught my attention because it's called Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> and then when I turned and looked at the cover, I was not expecting 
a swastika, <laughs> if you can see that. Um, but I looked at the description, it actually sounds like it could be interesting. It says it's a, it was a number one bestseller in France and a triumph all over Europe. So, um, yeah, and it has to do with World War II, of course, but, oh, it's by Loup Duran. Hmm. I don't know if I said that right. It's probably translated, I would assume. Translated by J. Maxwell Brown John. Okay. Um, next I have Lavinia by Ursula K. Le Guin. I have not read anything by her yet, and I know Sue was sorely disappointed in her, and I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about her. I'm going to give her another shot, but so far I've read three books by her and hated one of them. Um. And then the other two I just thought were kind of mediocre. I have read zero books by her, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Alright, next, the next one I got is The Ballad of Typhoid Mary by J.F. Federspiel, Federspiel, translated by Joel A.G. So this is about Typhoid Mary. Um, I'm actually not really sure. I think it's maybe historical fiction. Hmm. I'm not sure if, I, if it's nonfiction or not. I really don't know. I don't know. It was in the fiction section, but that doesn't necessarily. That's mean true. Anything. I think it's. I think it's fiction. Hmm. Because like, look at the. Because like, fiction. If, or if it was nonfiction, it would mm -hmm. be by um, subject. Right. Rather but this than this was author. author. So I'm hmm. guessing that it's fiction, like a fictionalized telling of Typhoid telling Mary, of Typhoid Mary's story. <clears throat> hmm. Next, I have The Shadow of the Crescent Moon by Fatima Buto. <laughs> I don't know. Fatima? Fatima? Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is set in Afghanistan during the American invasion, and it's about five young people who are just kind of living their lives when that happens and what happens to them. So. All right. Next one I have is The Meeting... At Telgen, I have no idea how to say yeah. that, uh, by Gunter Grass. Uh, this is probably translated as well, translated by Ralph Mannheim. And I have not yet read any Gunter Grass, but I own two of his books. I was going to say, didn't you get one during a library sale? Yeah, it has, like, I got, a rat on it or something? Well, I already owned the rat, mm -hmm. and I got the tin drum at a library sale. Huh. Um, but I had the rat forever, but it, I had read some stuff that said you should read the tin drum before you read the rat, so I had been waiting to read the tin drum first, and I got that, but I still haven't read it. And then, I don't know, I just saw this, and I just thought, Gunter Grass, I'll Gunter get it! Grass. So hopefully I like him, because I have three of his books now. <laughs> but uh, this is set during 1640, in 1647, right after the Thirty Years' War. Hmm. And it's a group of poets and writers gathering at this place. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and yeah. Yeah. There we go. And it does have like a note in the beginning that, so I'm probably going to have to like read some stuff before I read this, but it says, the historical background to the events and personalities dealt with in this novel may be unfamiliar to English and American readers. Leonard Forster has provided an afterword and notes on the dramatis personae, identifying the historical, literary, and commercial streams that had their confluence at Telugu. Telugu. So, so, I guess I'll have to read that first and then read the book. <laughs> <laughs> have to do homework first. Yeah, I have to go do some homework before I read that. Um, I got We Were the Mulvaney's by Joyce Carol Oates. I have not read anything by Joyce Carol Oates. Um, of course, I've heard about this and I've heard about her, but yeah, so I'm excited to read this. Yeah, I got that same book at the last library sale, I think, but I haven't read it yet either. Um, next one I have is Asunder by Chloe Arages. <laughs> Lots of words I can't pronounce Oof. today. Lots of tricky ones. Um, was this translated? Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. I don't think so. I think maybe if she's from the UK. Anyway, um, 
I feel like I'd heard of this maybe, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> it's uh, it's set right before the First World War. It says um, about a woman who works as a guard at the National Gallery in London. Hmm. So it says it's a rich, resonant novel of beguiling depths and beautiful strangeness, exploring oh. the delicate balance between creation and destruction, control and surrender. Interesting. So it sounded good. Hmm. Um, the next book I got, I bought because of the name. So it's called The Sugar Frosted Nutsack <laughs> by Mark Lehner. Let's you see. can't pass up a book called The Sugar Frosted Nutsack. Yeah, you really can't. And it's about gods and goddesses who live in this skyscraper. Um, so they're, they splintered into factions. Sounds interesting. So, I mean, whatever. Looks like it might be fun. <laughs> can't pass that nutsack. <laughs> Alright, the next book I have is On the Beach by Neville Shute. Which I actually already own this book, but I wanted this edition of it because it matches my edition of A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. So I'm probably just going to get rid of my other edition of On the Beach. And I have read this before, um, but it was probably when I was like 13 or 14 mm -hmm. years old. And I loved it at the time, and I really want to reread it sometime soon. Um, this is $12 a new one. Oh, <laughs> they must have bought that from... Um bookmarks, because that's what they do with their new books. Oh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and this is, a, like, post, it's set, like, right after this nuclear apocalypse, and uh, these people are slowly dying, basically, Ooh. after nuclear war, World War Three, and so the only people left alive are, like, the people in the very southern hemisphere, so, like, Ooh. Australia. I think it's set in Australia. Um, and then, like, I think maybe, like, South Africa are, like, the only people still living on the yes. earth. So, yeah, I loved it when I read it the first time, so I really want to read it again sometime soon. Yes, I still need to read that because I have it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, next, I have Coal Black Horse by Robert Olmsted. This is about the Civil War, and I guess it won the 2007 Heartland Award for Fiction, and it says echoes the works of Cormac McCarthy on the front of it, so I'm going to give it a go. <clears throat> the next one I have is The Strange Case of Rachel Kay by Rachel, Rachel Kushner. Cool. And I don't really know why I got this. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> something about it drew me in. And it says it's three pieces, and they must be extremely short, because this book is tiny. Yes. Um, it says, roughly maps the genesis of Rachel Kushner's fiction. I don't know. I've never read anything by her, so I don't know why I wanted to get it, but I just was like, fuck it. I want to get this book, so I did. It's calling to you. Yeah. Um, next, I got The Antiquarian by Gustavo Feveron Patriao, I'm going to guess. And it was translated from the Spanish by Joseph Mulligan. It's a pretty cover, and it sounded interesting. It's about passion, murder, and madness. Yeah, I got that same one at a library sale. Oh, shit. <laughs> Your beer. You can drink it if you want. <laughs> My bad. I also accidentally drank, took a drink out of your tea earlier. That's right. I'm pretty sure like, I thought we have it was the mine. same germs already, yeah. so I think we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. All right. Um, should we just both talk about this one? Because yeah. we both got one of the same ones. Yes. Next, which is Native Speaker by Cheng Ray Lee. Yes, mm. and it says, Korean-American Henry Park is... I'm not going to read all that. <laughs> um, but this is a book about a man of two worlds who's beginning to fear that he has betrayed both. So it's kind of like a immigration story. Yeah. This one has lots that of underlining in it. Oh, was it? Mine doesn't. I hope there's notes in the margins. That's fun. I love that. Mine doesn't have anything in it. How boring. Should I go again? Yes. 
All right, this was my last one that I got from the library sale, and it is called Any Other Name. No, that's wrong. Wait, The Split Worlds, Any Other, is it called Any Other Name? I'm confused. Okay, <sighs> okay it's called, oh no, it's book two. Oh, fuck. Damn it. God damn it. <laughs> it's called Any Other Name, and it's book two of The Split Worlds by Emma Newman. Fuck so, library sales, man. If any of you have read the series, let me know if I should bother trying to find the first one or if I should just say screw it and get rid of this. So, yeah, this is apparently second in a series, so fuck you! Fuck you, Emma Newman. <laughs> but it said it's down to Nabby with magic, so I was like, sold. Can't beat that. But we'll see. I okay. liked Planet Fall by Emma Newman. I, I have read Planet Fall too, and I still haven't read that. One. It's good. It's a pretty quick read. Yeah. Oh shit! I'm gonna need you to oh, calm down. That's my phone. It's fine. It's already that's broken. Fine. That's <laughs> fine. Um, I got The Reader by Bernhard Schlink because it sounded like it sounded familiar to me, but I'm not sure why. So I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel like I know this for some reason. So, oh, I guess it was translated from by German from from German <laughs> from German by Carol Brown Janaway. But yeah, for some reason this it struck a chord with me, so I bought it. I don't know. Right. Okay, so next I have some books that I've just acquired other places. Um, this one I actually got from Zulily, and it is The Lord of the Flies by Arthur Golden, or William Golding. <laughs> that wasn't even close to who's Arthur Golden. <laughs> Did I just make that up? No, I think that's a person. <laughs> I think that's a real person. <laughs> um, Lord. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got this to replace <laughs> my copy that had a page missing, if you recall that. Um, he wrote Memoirs of a Geisha. Okay, okay. So he's a real, he's a real person. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I liked this edition. I thought the cover looked cool, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, I got The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime uh, by Mark Haddon. Sue has read this, and she liked it, and the idea of it sounded pretty interesting to me, so I thought I would check it out. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Some people hate it a lot, but... Why do they hate it? I'm not really sure. I've heard somewhere that it's maybe a poor portrayal of someone with autism, but I feel like autism is such a spectrum that I feel, you know, like... Right, it might not match someone's experience, right. but it, you know... Because mm -hmm. um, I've heard other people say it's a great portrayal, so it's like, who knows. Um, and then I've also heard some people say that they hated his parents in the book, oh. which I mean... I don't think you're supposed to like them. It sounded like you were <laughs> supposed to hate them. Yeah, so I don't know. I thought it was really good when I read it. It's mm. been several years, but mm. anyway. Um, this next one I got at a thrift store. Uh, I always seem to find Daphne du Maurier books at the thrift store. Mm. I don't know what the deal is with that, but this is Jamaica Inn, and it's kind of a cool old version of it. Um, I don't really ha know anything about this book. But it's a cool like, copy of it. Yeah. I've heard great things about Daphne du Maurier in general, and I have heard great things about Jamaica Inn as well, but I don't really know really what it's about other than Jamaica Inn. It smells so good. Mm, it says, mm. I can smell it. It's like old, yeah. delicious book smell. <laughs> um... Next, I got The Edible Woman by Margaret Atwood, because I don't think I have this one yet, um, and I'm building a Margaret Atwood collection, so. Me too, and I haven't read any of it yet. <laughs> I love her. I love her so much. Alright, so this next Daphne du Maurier book I found at a different thrift store on the same day that I found Jamaica in, but this is Daphne du Maurier's Classics of the Macabre, Oh. and it's so it's like short stories um, illustrated by Michael Foreman, so there's illustrations, but it's like a few short creepy stories, I guess. That's pretty awesome. Um, and there's like, like color illustrations in it, so I thought that was pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. 
So, it's like a, oh, that, this is called The Birds. Is this what the movie is based on? I don't know. Hmm. Some birds munching on somebody yeah. right there. So, yeah, it's got some, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. I thought it was a cool, pretty cool. a good find, I would say. So. Um, and then the last book that I got looks like a kind of a shitty, cheesy sci-fi novel um, called The Terrans by Gene Johnson. And just looked fun. Um, it's about this yes. lady space. Yeah, she's psychic space too. Space person. Yeah, she's oh. born to a political family, but she's also psychic, and so yeah, she's a can't beat that. I know. So she, I mean, it'll probably be kind of shitty, but <laughs> it'll be fun, I think. All right. So the last few that I have <laughs> are my book of the month club picks. So I'll just kind of go through those quickly because I feel like everyone hears about the Book of the Month Club books. So you probably done heard about them. But I don't remember what order I got these in, but whatever. Um, the first one I have here is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. And this is like a, I think it's maybe like a family saga type of thing set in, in Ireland. Um, but it sounded good. So that's the one I chose. This one's actually one I got um, as an extra, like I paid like 10 bucks for it. Um, it's Hunger by Roxane Gay, which is a memoir of my body, it says. And I think this is her newest, this is her newest I book. I think so. Um, yeah, but I've read um, two of her books. Well, I read um, Difficult Women mm -hmm. and Bad Feminist, and I enjoyed both of those a lot. So mm -hmm. I thought I'd pick that one up. And then I have Final Girls by Riley Sager, and this is kind of a, I don't think it's exactly horror, I think it's more thriller, but it has something to do with, um, like, this girl who survived, like, a slasher movie type situation. Um, and I've been hearing mostly kind of mediocre things about it, which oh, is kind of a bummer, but um, I was hoping I'd be able to read it this month, but I doubt I have time. Um, and then I have The Power by Naomi Alderman, and this is about, like, um, society, it's like, what if women had special powers, basically. Hmm. Um, it says teenage girls and women now have immense physical power. With a flick of their fingers, they can cause agonizing pain and even death. So, it kind of, like, flips the power from the men to the women, but like in an extreme fashion. Hmm. Um, and this was, I think, nominated for the Man Booker Prize, perhaps? I could hmm. be wrong about that. Um, or it was some prize. Some, some <laughs> or prize. maybe it okay. won like the Bailey Women's. I don't, I don't know. I don't follow okay, these I don't prize know. things. Then the last one I have is Sourdough by Robin Sloan. And this one just sounded like fun, like it'd be a fun, like easy read. Um, but it also sounded kind of weird and interesting, and it has, like, this woman, like, inherits a, um, bakery, hmm. I think, from these men, the brothers, yeah, something like that. I don't know. It has something to do with a bakery, and it's, like, weird and kind of magical, I think. Hmm. I think there's maybe some supernatural type of stuff in it, nice. if I'm not mistaken, but... It's, it, this one just sounded like a fun, lighter read. So, that's it. Sounds like a good time. So that's our big-ass book haul, uh, mostly with library sale books. Yeah. But yeah, big-ass haul. Yep. Man, I love the library sale. Yeah. I can't pass it up, because, like, I did I not need any more books, man. Like, I don't either. My shelves are overflowing hardcore. Mm -hmm. Like, I have just stacks in the floor right now, because I don't know where to put them. And now I have more. <laughs> I know. I have to rearrange my bookshelf probably because I don't know how I'm going to get this stuff on there. Yeah. But you can't, like, it's so hard to pass They're up. They're so a, cheap. A bag of books for a dollar. Like, a bag of books. Sometimes, I mean, I found some, uh, some gems, like Song of the Forest was a book. Guys. Like, the Song of the Forest was a book that I just found at the library store and never mm -hmm. heard of it. thought it sounded cool and I fucking loved it. Yeah. It was a great book. It's awesome. Most of the Toni Morrison I have is from library yeah. sales. And yeah, mine too. Yeah. So, yeah. so I can't pass it up. I want to. I want to pass it up, but I cannot. Yeah, and there's another one. They do one every spring and every fall. So, so we have April. another one coming up in April. Yeah. And the spring sale is usually bigger, I think. Yeah. Or there's more people. I don't know. 
I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to go, I think, on... Because they have, like, regular days. Yeah. And then they've got, like, half price day and then dollar bag day. So yeah, because it runs for, what, four days? Mm -hmm. And then the first day, everything's, like, regular price. Right. Whenever they mark it. And then the second day is the same? Yep. It's and then the, the same third day is, price day. The third day is half price day, and then the, the last day is the dollar, dollar bag day. You can get... There's two set sections. There's a $5 bag section with, like, better... It's usually just books that are in better condition. Which right, I'm it's like, like the same okay. books, they're just in better Yeah, condition. and then there's a dollar back section, which is where we usually go. because yeah. we cheat. Yeah. And we don't care if our books are a little bit worn in. Yeah. Or have library stickers and shit on them. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, but yeah, so that's, that's our haul. Um, this beer, it's... It's pretty good. Like yeah. it's nothing, it's nothing fancy or nothing. But no, I'm excited because it's an IPA. I actually yeah. like. But it's a really like it doesn't taste that much like an IPA. Honestly. It's more like a pale ale. It's not very hoppy at all. Yeah. That's why I like it because maybe I, it's why it's called Big Easy, Big Flavor Easy Drinking. It says it is easy drinking. It says the hop flavor's big, but like life in New Orleans, we're taking it easy. So yeah, they. It's a very light on the hops, light on the hops uh, IPA, which is what I like. So, so maybe it'd be a good like gateway, gateway beer, IPA, gateway beer to IPAs, <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> if you for some reason just really want to drink IPAs yeah. but you don't like them, try try this one. Because they are a bit of an acquired taste. I didn't like them for a long time, and then some mm. somewhere my taste, taste buds switched. like switched, yeah. and I was like. No, okay. I'm into this. Okay. I still don't really like them, but there have been a couple that I found that I like, and this is one of them. So yeah, this is good to know. Like if I'm ever anywhere and there aren't any dark beers, mm -hmm. but they have this, you know, yeah. I can go with this. So I think my gateway IPA was the Chainbreaker White IPA from the Shoots. Oh, the Shoots. I think it was like after though. I drank that that I suddenly liked IPAs and was like. I can do this. It's because Deschutes is magical. <laughs> I, like, Deschutes can't fail in my opinion. They're a really good brewery. Yeah. I love everything they make. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, that's going to be it for us then. There will be some links down below where you can find us elsewhere on social media. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Do it. Do it. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.